In this video, we're going to focus on Newton's Law of Coulomb. Now, let's work on this example problem. It takes 12 minutes for an object at 100 degrees Celsius to cool to 80 degrees Celsius in a room at 50. How much longer will it take for its temperature to decrease to 70? Feel free to try this problem if you know how to do it. Now, there's an equation that will help us to answer this question. And here it is. The temperature at any time t, that's a lowercase t, is equal to the temperature of the surroundings plus the difference between the initial temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings times e this e is basically the inverse of the natural log function raised to the negative kt where k is a constant so just keep this in mind to is the initial temperature of the object ts is the surrounding temperature or the temperature of the environment t of t is the temperature of the object at some time t to the initial temperature is the temperature when t is zero. That is, the time is zero. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to use the information in the first sentence to find the constant k. Once we find the constant k, then we can answer the second part of the problem. So, the 12 minutes, that is lowercase t, that's the time. That's the time it takes for the temperature to go from 100 to 80. The initial temperature, TO, is 80. The temperature of the surroundings, that's basically the room temperature, that's 50. That's TS. And after 12 minutes, the temperature is going to go from... Actually, the initial temperature is not 80. I take it back. The initial temperature is 100, and it decreases to 80. TS is still 50. The final temperature after 12 minutes, which is basically T of 12, and that's 80. And lowercase t is 12. So 80 is equal to 50. The difference between 100 and 50, that is equal to 50, times E to the negative 12K. So let's go ahead and solve for K. Let's begin by subtracting both sides by 50. So 80 minus 50 is 30. So 30 is equal to 50 e to the negative 12k. Next, let's divide by 50. 30 over 50, that's basically 3 over 5. And that's equal to e to the negative 12k. Now our next step is to take the natural log of both sides. The reason why you want to do that is because the property of natural logs allows you to take the exponent and move it to the front. So let me just uh, get rid of a few things. Let's make some space. So right now what we have is the natural log of 3 over 5 and that's equal to negative 12k times the natural log of e. ln e is equal to 1. So basically, that disappears. So now, to solve for k, you just got to divide both sides by negative 12. The natural log of 3 over 5, that's equal to negative 0 0.5108. And if you divide that by negative 12, you'll see that k is equal to 0 0.04257. So now that we have the value of k, we can now answer the second part of the problem. So let me just write that somewhere on the side. But first, let's erase a few things. Now let's rewrite the equation. And so it's uh, t of t, the temperature at some time, 
T is equal to the surrounding temperature plus the difference between the initial temperature and the surrounding temperature times E raised to the negative KT. Now, in the second part of the problem, we want to find out how much longer it's going to take for its temperature to decrease to 70. That means we're looking for the time it takes to go from 80 to 70. Now, the temperature of the surroundings remains 50. The room temperature has not changed. But if we're going from uh, 80 to 70, the initial temperature is now 80. And the final temperature, which is T of T, that's 70. Ts is still 50. And we know K is 0 0.04257 times T. So now let's go ahead and solve for T. So let's subtract both sides by 50. 70 minus 50, that's going to be equal to 20. And then if we combine 80 minus 50, we know that's going to be 30. And so this is what we now have. Now our next step is to divide both sides by 30. Twenty divided by thirty is going to be two over three. So two over three is equal to e raised to the negative point zero four two five seven t. Now let's take the natural log of both sides. So what we now have is, is uh, ln 2 over 3, and that's equal to negative 0 0.04257t natural log of e. And the natural log of e, once again, it's 1. So to solve for t, we need to divide both sides by negative 0 0.04257. So t is equal to ln 2 over 3 which is negative 0 0.4055, and divide that by negative 0 0.04257. And this will give you about 9.52 minutes. Now let's talk about what this means. So we started at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, and then the temperature decreased to uh, 80 degrees Celsius. And we use that information to calculate K. And then the temperature decreased to 70 degrees Celsius. Now, going from 100 to 80, it took 12 minutes. Keep in mind, the surrounding temperature is 50. Now, to go from 80 to 70, it took 9.5 minutes. Now, how long will it take to go from 100 to 70? What would you say? You know it's simply going to be the sum of 12 and 9.5, which is basically 21.5 minutes. But use the equation to confirm that answer. By the way, notice that whenever the temperature gets close to the surrounding temperature, the rate of change, the rate of temperature change decreases the temperature decreases more slowly. In the first 12 minutes, the temperature went down by 80, I mean by 20 degrees Celsius. In the next 9.5 minutes, it only went down by 10. And so as you can see, as the difference in temperature between the object and the surroundings, as that decreases, the rate at which temperature changes decreases as well. So the temperature changes much faster when the difference is larger. When the difference is small between the object and the surroundings, the temperature doesn't change uh, that quickly anymore. But let's go ahead and prove that 
from 100 to 70, it's about 12, I mean 21.5 minutes. So let's use this equation. T of T is equal to TS plus TO minus TS times E raised to negative KT. So the final temperature is going to be 70. The surrounding temperature is still 50, but the initial is now 100. And K is still negative 0.04257. And our goal is to solve for t. So first, let's subtract both sides by 50. So 20 is equal to 100 minus 50 is 50. And then this is going to be e to the negative kt. Next, let's divide both sides by 50. 20 over 50 is basically 2 over 5. And just as we did before, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So ln 2 over 5 is equal to negative 0 0.04257t. And natural log of E is 1. Now let's calculate T. It's going to be ln. 2 over 5 divided by negative k. Dividing these two numbers, this will give you 21.52, which we got that before by adding 9.5 and 12. So you can also uh, get the answer that way. But the answer, though, that we were looking for, how much longer will it take to go from 80 to 70? The answer is 9.5 minutes. But let's say if you did this way, if you went from 100 to 70, we need to take this number, subtract it by 12, and it will give you 9.5 minutes. So now you know how to use Newton's uh, law of cooling to uh, answer problems like this. You know how to use the formula to solve it. But let's talk about how to derive the formula. The derivative of the temperature with respect to time is equal to negative times k, which is the relative decay constant, multiplied by the difference between the final temperature, which you can describe as uh, T of T, but for now I'm just going to write it as capital T, minus the temperature of the surroundings. So T is the temperature of the object at some time T. As you can see, the rate of change at which the temperature changes with respect to time is proportional between the difference in the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. The greater the difference, the greater the rate of change. And the reason why we have the negative sign is because the temperature of the object is decreasing, the object is cooling. As long as the temperature of the object is greater than the temperature of the surroundings, the object will cool. And so overall, dt dt is going to be negative. So let's say if the object is at 100 degrees Celsius, and let's say the surroundings is 50 degrees Celsius, heat is going to flow from hot to cold. That's just the way it works. And so as the object loses heat energy, the temperature will decrease. And as the temperature goes down, dt, dt is going to be negative. Now, t minus ts is positive. 100 minus 50 is positive. But due to the negative sign, dt, dt is going to be negative. Now, let's say if the opposite was true. Let's say if the temperature of the object was less than the temperature of the surroundings. In this case, heat will flow into the object, so the temperature of the object will increase. Therefore, dt dt will be positive, and we can see why that's the case. 
we have negative k times 20 minus 50. 20 minus 50 is negative times negative k, that's positive 30k. And so the temperature is going up. So I want you to understand this expression. The rate at which the temperature changes with respect to time is proportional to some constant k and is proportional to the difference in temperature. But now let's go ahead and continue to derive the formula. This is just some extra information. So the first thing that we need to do is multiply both sides by dt. So this will cancel. And what we now have is dt is equal to negative k times t minus ts times dt. Next, let's divide both sides by the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of the surroundings. So now we have 1 over t minus ts dt is equal to negative k dt. So now that we separated lowercase t from uh, capital T, we can now find the antiderivative. We can integrate both sides. Now, it's important to understand what is a variable and what is a constant. Lowercase t is a variable because the time could be 5 minutes, 8 minutes, the time changes. k is a constant. k doesn't change. Capital T also changes. The temperature of the object could be 60, 80, 100, that changes. However, the surrounding temperature, Ts, is not a variable, it's a constant. It doesn't change. The room temperature may be constant 50, it might be 80, but for the most part, it's relatively constant. So our variables are capital T and lowercase t. So what is the antiderivative? of 1 over t minus ts. As an example, what is the antiderivative of 1 over x? This is going to be ln x. The antiderivative of 1 over x plus 5, for example, is ln x plus 5. 5 is a constant. You don't have to worry about it too much. So therefore, the antiderivative of 1 over t minus ts is simply going to be the natural log of t minus ts. So we're going to get ln t minus ts. Now on the right side, the antiderivative of dx, which is really 1 dx, that's equal to 1x. The antiderivative of 5 dx is going to be 5x. So the antiderivative of k dt is simply kt. Now, there's a negative sign in front, so it's going to be negative k times t. And anytime you are integrating a function, you need to add the constant of integration. Since we have an indefinite integral, so that's going to be plus c. Now, our goal is to solve for capital T, which is the same as t of t, the temperature at any time t. Now, to get rid of the natural log function, we need to put this function on the exponent of e. If ln minus, I mean, excuse me, if ln t minus ts is equal to negative kt plus c, then we could say that e to the ln t minus ts is equal to e raised to the negative kt plus c. If these two are equal to each other, and if e is equal to each other, then this must be equal to that. It's just the way it works. It's math. Now, what do you think we need to do at this point? What would you do? Now, let's review a few basic things in algebra. For example, you know that x squared times x cubed is x raised to the 2 plus 3, which is x to the fifth power. Whenever you multiply by a common base, you may add the exponents. So likewise, we can go backwards. We could take x to the 2 plus 3 and separate it into x squared times x cubed. 
which is what we need to do on the right side. So e raised to the negative kt plus c is basically e to the negative kt times e to the c. Now e is a constant, c is a constant, so this whole thing is just one constant, which we could simply call c. And I'm going to put it in the front. Now e raised to the ln t minus s, because they both contain the base e, these two will cancel. The e and the ln are inverses of each other, so they'll both disappear. And you'll get t minus ts. Now, t is the same as t of t, which I'm going to write it like this now. Now I'm going to take this term, move it to the right side. So t of t is equal to ts plus c e to the negative kt. Our goal at this point is to find the value of c. And we're going to use the initial temperature to do that. So let's plug in 0 into the equation. Let's replace lowercase t of 0. This is going to be ts plus c e to the negative k times 0. Negative k times 0 is just 0. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So we have ts plus c times 1. So now we could solve for c. Notice that C is basically the difference between T0 and Ts. To get C by itself, i got to move this back to the left side. T of 0, the temperature of the object when the time is 0, is basically the initial temperature. T of 0 is T initial. So T initial minus Ts is equal to the constant C. So therefore, we can replace C with T initial minus Ts. And it, this is going to give us the, um, the formula for Newton's law of cooling. And so here it is. T of T is equal to the surrounding temperature, Ts, plus, now C is the difference between the initial temperature of the object and the surrounding temperature, or the temperature of the room, times E raised to the negative kT. And so now you know how to derive the formula for Newton's law of coolant. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.